I was going to go to Suriname, but I got rejected at the border for one simple reason. You already know what I'm going to say. Greetings, friends, and thanks for joining us for another edition of For the Culture Guyana. Like I said before, I was planning to go to Suriname, but I got rejected over one simple reason. But before I get into that, be sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Also, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. We'd really appreciate it. So, Suriname. If you know me personally, you know that I've always wanted to go to Suriname. But if you also know me personally, you probably know that each time I've gotten the opportunity to go, for some reason, something stopped me and I just was not able to go. And apparently last week is just the latest example of this series of unfortunate events. I even made it all the way to Molson Creek Burbese, the border crossing. I had all my required documents, or so I thought. Turns out I was missing one thing my United Nations issued yellow immunization book. I got the yellow fever shot almost three years ago, but it was on a regular hospital issued immunization form. That's a no-no. So because of that, I missed out on going to Suriname. However, I was not the only one who was not aware of this fact. I and a busload of people, literally a busload of people, had to travel an hour back to New Amsterdam in Burbies, meaning we missed the boat. But at least I got my yellow card, obviously. Also, I got to see the beauty that is the ancient county of Burbies. Oh, and also I got to help a Venezuelan guy who didn't speak a word of English. I actually, you know, helped him get his card and all that. So, you know, that was pretty cool. So, yeah. So if you're visiting Guyana and you want to take a trip or you know a one or a two day trip to Suriname, you need to take note of the following. If you're the holder of a Guyanese passport, like me, or if you're a citizen of the following countries, you don't need one. Don't worry, I'll save you the trouble of pausing and rewinding this video. If you're an American, yes. Americans do need to apply for a visa. To apply for a visa, you must submit a valid passport, one that is good for six months from the intended date of travel, a copy of your itinerary, and or a round trip ticket to prove that you are going to be leaving the nation, one completed application form, a business letter for business visas, and one recent passport photo. Now this applies to all adults. Children actually have a different set of requirements, but application forms can be downloaded from the embassy's website, www.surinamembassy.org. Visa fees. US passport holders, both business and tourist visas, up to five years for multiple entries cost 100 US. Diplomatic visas or official service visas, if you're going on a government uh, trip, that that's free. There are websites that even offer e-visas, but I have no idea about those services, so use them at your own risk. If you get ripped off, don't blame me because I didn't tell you to go to it. However, the simplest and easy way to get a visa for Suriname while you're in Guyana is to visit the embassy at the corner of Anira Street and New Garden Street in Queenstown, Georgetown. Visa services are open from 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday only. Tourist card applications, which cost $40 US, can be dropped off from 8.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Monday through Friday, with pickup the same day from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Visa processing takes one to five days depending on nationality. Your e-visa may take a little bit longer, but if you're going in person, one to five days. And also no flip-flops or tank tops are allowed on the premises, so remember that if you're planning on going. Aside from the visa, if you have spent more than 12 hours in the country that is at risk, uh, for yellow fever, you will need to take the vaccine in order to visit Suriname. So if you're coming directly from America, you're good. But if you spend more than 12 hours in Guyana, sorry. However, it must be on the United Nations issued yellow immunization record, that yellow fever vaccine. And while you can get the shot at just about any healthcare facility in Guyana, there are only two places in Guyana where you can actually get this yellow card. 
That is the Ministry of Public Health Headquarters on Brick Dam in Georgetown and the Ministry's office in New Amsterdam in Berbice. The added benefit of getting it from the Ministry is that it's free. Or at least so I'm told. I actually got mine at a private hospital. Like I said, that was my whole issue and I had to pay. So, you know, check that out at your own risk. But anyway, it should be low cost if it's not free. So fast forward to your big day. What do you need to do? Collect your passport, your visa, your yellow fever card, and other relevant travel documents such as your travel itinerary, the address of the hotel you're staying at, and any other relevant papers that you feel that you may need. And of course, you'll need cash. Money, money. Surinamese currency is the Surinamese dollar, which is called the SRD, and that trades at 1 SRD to 28 Guyana dollars, or that's 1 US dollar to 746 SRD. So, transportation. You can take the bus or a shared car from Starbrook Market in Georgetown for $3,000. 3000 Guyana dollars, that's about 15 US. That would take you all the way to the river crossing in Berbice. You can also arrange private transportation. I have no idea what that costs. You can look it up or ask around, try whatever. Once you reach the ferry crossing, the ticket is another 3000 Guyana dollars. The whole crossing takes about an hour. However, there is only one crossing per day and that's at 8 a.m. Miss it and you'll have to try again tomorrow. There is another way to cross. It's an illegal crossing, mind you, and that it's several miles to the south of Molson Creek. Now, taking that route is often called the backtrack. It is a popular way to cross, but again, keep in mind that you will not be within the normal protections of the law because, of course, the nature of the legal trip. You're illegally crossing a border. You all Americans know how that is. Worse yet, the trip itself is quite dangerous as it takes passengers in a speedboat across a very large river, often with no safety vests. Costs range for, for the crossing with some persons claiming to have spent even up to 20,000 Guyana dollars, around $100 per trip. Also, seeing as the trip was illegal, you can't take the ferry back to Ghana because legally you shouldn't even be in Suriname. Whatever happens to you after you cross again, like I said, I have no idea because obviously I got turned around. Anyway, it's all good because I still got to spend a wonderful day traveling across this beautiful country and seeing the beautiful county of Berbice, which is a place I hadn't really been too much before. And I also got to meet some pretty nice people along the way. So that's cool. Love you, Burbies. So one of the biggest tips I have for anybody who's doing any multinational travel out, you know, going through Guyana is to check the embassy. Not, not just the website, but call the embassy directly or visit the embassy for information to avoid any needless frustration at the border, like I did. Anyway, so that's it for this edition of For the Culture Guyana. Be sure to share this video with all your friends, especially those who travel often. And if you've had a similar experience while traveling, let us know in the comments below. I'd definitely love to hear about it. You know, help somebody to avoid that frustration. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to follow us on Facebook. Yes, we have a Facebook. Follow it. Anyway, until next week, do it for the coach.